What's up guys, Mark Contreras here. Now as you may have heard, Chris and Milka Bruckheim have been hosting some live typography critiques right here on our Academy channel. And they've been packed with some pretty good lessons. Now if you don't have time to watch everything, don't worry, we've got you covered. Coming up, we've got four tips from critique number two that you can use to improve your typography today. Check it out. What makes this layout beautiful, if you look at it, look at this space, not just the typography. So uh, this, this uh, work, we have medium uh, uh, background space, and then we have large space. And then next, uh, below that, we have a large space. And then below that, you have the small space. So if you go below the text, so that's what's making this piece work. You see that? So you have medium, uh, you have small, medium, and large. And you don't want to have, have it go in that order. You don't want it to go be small, medium, large. You do want to play around with it. You do yeah. want to have it large, me, uh, small, and then medium. In the hands of a talented typographer, you can see how information can be manipulated, readjusted, and configured to whatever you want, all right? So this is the list made into a paragraph. And lists typically are not presented this way, and it makes it a little bit harder to read, but it creates a different block and shape of information. And like we showed you guys before, you can adjust this and change the column width, and you could take this and free it and make it like a list like this. And so this has yet a different feeling because this is rather horizontal where this is vertical. And we're going to have challenges with the longest name, Joseph Mueller Brockman, and that's going to dictate how this feels, okay? Whereas Milka was talking before about the rag, the rag right here, with lists like this, you, there's nothing you can do. You're not, you're not really supposed to change their name, but everywhere else you want to control this, okay, as you're doing that. So these, these are kind of my, my cupboard where I have all my ingredients laid out, so it's a lot easier for me to work with. So I have a list now, and I've broken the names into first and last, which makes it twice as tall as this. You can see that, maybe even taller. And then I could make the list look like this, break it into column view. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was the first and last name broken apart, shown as three columns, right? So they all have different feelings. Yeah, how do you uh, fix or treat um, rag? So uh, you were talking about how the rag, you know, can change the way that you visibly look at the, the pattern of words. Yeah, so you want to do something like my type instructor, Simon Johnson. I didn't have Rebecca Mendez. He talked about it being evenly uneven. So it kind of undulates. It goes in and it goes out, but it doesn't create sharp lines. It doesn't create weird faces or mountaintops or things like that. So three will make a pattern. So on the third one, if you're able to, to force a paragraph break, then you're able to do so. And in some words, you can hyphenate to kind of control the rag, and that's what you do. And since we're only dealing with one page, a lot of tricks you can do. You can change the width of the column of the paragraph, so making it wider and, or narrower, and that will resolve a lot of your problems until you get a more pleasant looking rag. I tend to go to um, something that's maybe what you said is more to the right and goes too much to um, a visually interesting thing. But um, I always find that I'm struggling with keeping it uh, legible and readable. Um, so your advice would be to make it quote unquote more boring and then try to uh, uh, contain myself into making uh, too many tricks and stuff. Am I right? Yeah. So here's what I'm going to, here's an analogy. Cause I'm going to try <laughs> to like, uh, channel, channel my inner Milka here. I'm going to use an yeah. analogy. <laughs> okay. Let's pretend like you have this most amazing spice. It could be chilies. It could be saffron. Uh, it could be truffle oil, something. And you're like, this is delicious. Or even fat, like pork fat, right? And you're like, oh, I love. And then can you, could you imagine like the proportion of a BLT sandwich, a bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich? It's a lot of stuff and a little bit of bacon. And the contrast between the bread, the tanginess of the mayonnaise, the crispness of the iceberg lettuce and the tomatoes really complements the salty, fatty part 
of the bacon. What oh, people are trying to do is like bacon and they smother it all <laughs> over the place. And then you eat it and you're just like, whoa, this is gross. I feel gross afterwards. Okay. So a little bit of spice, a little bit of an accent or a really rich ingredient, the flair, the, the, the right, uh, meaning the crazy design, the, the expressive experimental typography, use a little bit of it because it goes a really long way. That's what I want you to think about. Imagine what's going to happen next. As we move forward and we add more things like lines and all different kinds of point sizes and weights and shapes and texture, what else do you have left? And now what are you going to do during that phase? You're going to make it really tight and boring, <laughs> right? Work within the constraints. Make sure it's really legible that there's good use of space, negative space in particular. And then, ah, I feel like it's a little bit boring. Let me try this one thing. And that's what's going to do it. I see the same thing happening with logo designers. Too many tricks. Everything that you have in your arsenal as a designer, you just shove into that logo. And this is why the design doesn't age well. You look at it like right now, it's okay. And over time, you're like, oof. So master the foundation, the principles, the bones of the house are strong. The foundation is really solid. A little wind is going to knock it up and it's not going to knock it over. Where you go crazy, throw a little paint on it. Do some inter interesting tile work. That's really where you want to spend that energy. If you want to learn more about typography, you can check out the typography critiques that we're doing right here on the Future Academy channel. And if you really want to dive deep, we have a typography course that you can find on our website, thefuture.com. Enrolling in the course also gives you the opportunity to submit your work for any live critiques conducted by Christo.